First Lady Michelle Obama and former President George W. Bush shared a sweet embrace at the opening of the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture on Saturday. Michelle grasped Bush's hand as they both smiled before Obama took the stage to deliver the final speech to officially open the museum, which has been in the works since 2003. From the 3,000 objects now on display at the museum, it was a simple block of stone that Obama focused on as he began his lengthy and powerful address to a crowd filled with the likes of Oprah Winfrey and Will Smith. The slave block, where thousands of men and women had been bought and sold, had a plaque next to it, commemorating the speeches of General Andrew Jackson and Henry Clay in 1830. Consider what this artifact tells us about history, about how it's old, about what can be cast aside, Obama began. That block I think explains why this museum is so necessary, he continued. Because that same object reframed, put in context, tells us so much more. And it is the new Smithsonian Museum, the president explained, that would tell the true story of America, one encompasses suffering and delight of fear but also hope. This national museum helps to tell a richer and fuller story of who we are, Obama explained. It helps us better understand the lives of, yes, the president but also the slave, the industrialist but also the porter, the keeper of the status quo but also the activist seeking to overthrow that status quo. Hopefully this museum can inspire us to talk to each other, the president added. And more importantly listen to each other and most importantly see each other, see how our stories are bound together. The 85,000 square feet museum would not only tell an essential part of the American story, Obama said, but one that at times has been overlooked. As Americans we rightfully passed on the tales of the giants who built this country, who led armies into battles, who waged seminal debates in the halls of Congress and corridors of power, he said. But too often we ignored the stories of millions upon millions of others, who built this nation just as surely, whose humble eloquence, whose calloused hands, whose steady drive helped to create cities, erect industries, build the arsenals of democracy. And by knowing this other story, we better understand ourselves and each other, it binds us together, it reaffirms that all of us are American, he continued. After the opening Bush shared a photo on Instagram with the caption, Thanks for taking our photo with the Bonner family, Mr. President. A great nation does not hide its history, it faces its flaws and corrects them. The Eton Mick tells the truth, that a country founded on the promise of liberty held millions in chains. That the price of our union was America's original sin. I was honored to sign the bill authorizing the construction of this national treasure. And I am pleased it now stands where it has always belonged, on the National Mall. After Obama's rousing speech, the President Michelle rang the Freedom Bell from the First Baptist Church of Williamsburg with members of the Bonner family to declare the museum was officially open instead of cutting a ribbon, the Obamas decided to ring the bell, which was acquired by the church, one of the first organized entirely by African Americans for African Americans. In 1886 the Bonner family, who helped the Obamas ring the bell, are a four-generation African-American family. Ruth Bonner, pictured in purple, was the daughter of Elijah Odom, a man born a slave in Mississippi Obama and Michelle adorably held hands as they were first introduced at the dedication ceremony, to the glee of the young choir that sang behind them former President George W. Bush kicked off the opening ceremony saying the museum would inspire the nation to go farther and get there faster on its journey toward justice Bush signed the legislation in 2003 authorizing construction of the museum on the National Mall to move forward more videos Obama added, that African American history is not separate from our larger American story, it's not the underside of the American story, it is central to the American story. That our glory is how we wrestled triumph from tragedy and how we are able to remake ourselves again, and again, and again, in accordance with our highest ideals. Bush, who signed the legislation in 2003 authorizing construction of the museum on the National Mall to move forward, the said a great nation does not hide from its history, it faces its flaws and corrects them.
He added that he believed the museum would go on to inspire the nation to go farther and get there faster on its journey toward justice. Obama noted that it was in the embrace of truth where real patriotism lies. It is an act of patriotism to understand where we've been, he said. It strengthens us, it emboldens us, it should fortify us. It was a story, and a truth, that Obama noted perhaps needed to be told now more than ever, as he noted how in the large building before him held decades of the history of protest. This museum gives us context for our time, gives us sense for how they have evolved, he said. Perhaps they can help a white visitor understand the pain and anger of demonstrators in Ferguson and Charlotte. The story told here doesn't just belong to black Americans, it belongs to all Americans, Obama added. For the African American experience has been just as shaped by Europeans and Asian Americans and Latinos, we have informed each other, we are a stew. Oprah Winfrey and Will Smith took part in a poetry battle on stage quoting lines from the likes of Maya Angelou and Langston Hughes to celebrate African-American literature Winfrey quoted lines from poetry by Angelou and Zora Neale Hurston, as Smith commented that was hot more videos it reminds us that routine discrimination and Jim Crow aren't ancient history, it's just a blink in the eye of history, it was just yesterday. And so we should not be surprised that all the healing is not done, we shouldn't despair that it is not all solved and knowing the larger story should dot 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 further inspire us to further progress. Following his speech Obama and Michelle rang the historic Freedom Bell, which was acquired in 1886 by the historic First Baptist Church in Williamsburg, Virginia. That church is believed to be among the First Baptist Churches organized entirely by African Americans for African Americans, and the bell will be returned for its 240th anniversary later this year. Helping the Obamas were the Bonner family, a four-generation African-American family whose matriarch, Ruth Bonner was the daughter of Elijah Odom, a man born a slave in Mississippi. With the ring of the bell the museum, the 19th and newest of the Smithsonian's, was officially open, marking the completion of a journey that was more than a century in the making. The push for the museum began in 1915 with African-American Civil War veterans looking for a way to commemorate America's black experience. Congressman John Lewis of Georgia, a longtime civil rights icon, worked with then-Senator Sam Brown back of Kansas to usher legislation through Congress before President Bush signed off on the construction. Construction was completed earlier this year on the museum which was designed by British Ghanaian architect David Ajay. The building strikes a unique shape on the mall with its three-tiered bronze exterior panels inspired by an African wooden column. More videos The pattern bronze-colored tiles are inspired by 19th-century ironwork created by slaves in the South, and allow sunlight into the museum through patterned openings. Obama and Bush sat side by side at they took seats of honor at the opening ceremony with their wives, Michelle Obama and Laura Bush. They were joined by civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis of Georgia, and museum founding director Lonnie Bunch. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts also sat on stage. Former President Bill Clinton sat among dignitaries in the crowd, next to Vice President Joe Biden. Former Secretary of State Colin Powell, House Speaker Paul Ryan, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and men representing the famed Tuskegee Airmen were some of the people seen in the crowd in front of the stage. Oprah Winfrey and Will Smith took part in a poetry battle on stage, quoting lines from the likes of Maya Angelou and Langston Hughes to celebrate African American literature. History, despite its wrenching pain cannot be unlived but a face with courage need not be lived again, Oprah began, quoting Angelou. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sore, and then run, Smith followed, citing Hughes. Does it stink? Maybe it just sags, like a heavy load, or does it explode? Actors Robert De Niro and Angela Bassett also spoke during the ceremony and Stevie Wonder and Patti LaBelle performed before Obama took the stage. LaBelle sang Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come and, at the song's end, simply said Hillary Clinton, to a crowd of rousing applause.
slash slash data adverts dot add to array pus in red underscore player type 636 by 1 id in red player slash slash share or comment on this article